to uh, the Otaku Clubhouse podcast. This is episode 10. Today is just uh, me and Akuma Soul. I'm sorry, you forget. I am not Akuma Soul. I am the Akuma Soul, the Roman Reigns of the Otaku Clubhouse. Thank you very much. No, that's not true. (laughs) You'd be kicked off. Yeah, also, if I was the Roman Reigns of the Otaku Club podcast, I'd be the last to show up and the last anybody wanted to do. <laughs> oh, God. So, can, can, I just, can I just jump straight to the fucking biggest grievance I've had of this year already? All right, uh, let's talk about the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble 2017. It was actually a very, very good Royal Rumble. I mean, I don't remember if uh, I don't know if you saw saw the whole thing. Did you, Felix? I just saw the uh, the actual rumble. Like I tuned in. Yeah. That's when I found the good uh, uh, official you know, channel W. I watched it on the WWE channel. <laughs> don't tell Vince. <laughs> <laughs> so the match card was actually really good, and if anybody missed it it's really sad because uh there was a lot of good things on the pre-show surprisingly or the kickoff show there was the becky lynch nikki bella naomi versus uh alexa bliss uh mickey james and natalia match which was on the kickoff show and it was really good and for anybody who missed it there was a a, a triple plex a triplex three the women all got together in the ring and they suplexed all the other women Naomi picked up a win and it seems like Naomi is actually going to get a push and I like Naomi uh, fun fact her real name is Tiffany Fatu oh. she is married to uh, I think Jimmy Uso which is the son of Rikishi so if that kid doesn't end up being a great high flyer I'll be very upset he's going to uh, be no oh, it's going to no, I, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna let, avoid let's, that. Let's, yeah, let's, I, I already felt the chill from what you were attempting to get across. Brat. But, uh, <laughs> stop. Anyway, uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson defeated Sheamus and Cesaro and became the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Which finally the club gets a fucking gets a fucking win. And they're fucking tag team champions like they probably should have been forever ago. But now their fucking tag team championship feels as fucking, if not more so, undeserved than like half the other tag team champions we've had in the last couple of months. Uh, Nia Jax and uh, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks got fucking murdered again. Uh, Charlotte Flair and Bailey. Charlotte continues her... uh, continues her pay-per-view winning streak and Bailey botches a fucking elbow that nearly bust all of Charlotte's teeth out of her mouth. Whew. If if people if you didn't notice it, she botches it like I think near the end of the match and you can see Charlotte is visibly pissed off. Like she's very it's upset about Paige that. Paige doesn't have like that strong upper body strength, you know. Wait, you said Paige? Oh, who did you say? Bailey. Oh, they're the same person, basically. Oof, there are a lot of marks out there who will <laughs> spring you up for even implying that heavenly goth goddess Paige is the same as Bailey. Pretty sure Alberto Del Rio would also punch you in the face. Side note, did you know Alberto Del Rio used to date Charlotte, too? I'm sure of it. That dude gets around. I guess he really is El Patron. So, <laughs> what? What? Kevin Owens beat Roman Reigns after fucking, after hitting Roman Reigns with not just the fucking uh, cannonball, which is one of his signature moves, not just hitting Roman Reigns with a fucking, with brass knuckles and a fucking fake Superman punch. He also hit, no joke, the Stone Cold Stunner on Roman, and Roman still kicked out. Yeah. But it ended with Braun Strowman taking him down. So, for fuck's sake. Because, you know, Roman is just, uh, he's just this big, invincible guy, you know? Fuck off. <laughs> uh, Neville and Rich Swan actually had a really good match. I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad people started to get behind them halfway through because I really like the cruiserweights especially Rich and uh, Neville Neville's fucking great and people don't really get behind Rich as much as I feel they should 
Sorry, you'll have to forgive me. I'm a little sick. Yeah, sick and tired of the As fucking a... WWE. <laughs> Let's just get to the main event. <laughs> Let's talk. A... No, 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 no. I just I want I I want to talk about one last thing right. beforehand, because then I'll, then we can rant. <clears throat> the match between John Cena and AJ Styles. Boy, howdy, was that a match? Those two really know how to put on a match, as if anybody didn't of already course. know. But John Cena is now the what 16-time world champion, the biggest John Cena in the universe, or some the God, Lord and Savior Cena of C Nation, <laughs> etc. Anyway, let's move on to uh, let's move on to the worst part of the night. It's not even necessarily, like, because the actual, like, there was a bunch of cool moments in the event leading up to number 30. Like, uh, the New Day, they were wrecking shop, and I was like, wow, there's way too many black people in the ring, and they just all get knocked out at once. <laughs> they eliminated every single black person by the two fucking, by the whitest guy in the fucking world, Shameless. <laughs> Shameless is quite possibly the whitest man I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, look at him when he, the fucking lights hit him. He, it's it's blinding. Yeah, well, that's his gimmick. Is a... <laughs> but, yeah, uh, they also had a few... They had a pretty good thing with Jack Gallagher, who I really like Jack Gallagher. The gentleman Jack Gallagher. He's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Then, of course... Braun Strowman yeah, came and out. He was like a monster. He was killing everybody. They had to team up to take yeah. him out. He eliminated seven people. Uh, Jer Jericho he did good too. Well, he survived the longest. Somebody timed it. Yeah, an hour and 13 seconds, which makes him, I think, the longest, uh, the person who's been in Royal Rumbles the longest in history. Like, just cumulative yeah. time. He's the longest. Uh, then we got to, because I'm skipping yeah. around a lot, you have to forgive me. Uh, we got to the mo the best part of the night. My boy, Ty Dillinger, fucking comes in at number 10, exactly like everybody had begged and hoped and pleaded for. But we knew WWE, and we were like, no, there's no way WWE will ever give us anything we want. And they proved us wrong. There's no way that WWE can possibly fuck up this moment for us. They gave us exactly what we wanted. They'll just keep doing it from now on. That's what I thought. <laughs> You're smart. But, like, does that mean that Ty Dillinger, he now, like, has, like, a, a, a fucking, a, a guy giving right to all tens in the E now? <laughs> like, it's gonna be like the, oh, this is the 10th anniversary, Ty comes out of nowhere? Like, <laughs> fucking, it's the 10th, it's the 10th anniversary of etc. Ty Dillinger wins. Oh, no, he's gonna be out for the 10 count! He's out for the 10 count! <laughs> fucking, oh, it's fucking, somebody dropped a $10 bill, Ty Dillinger walks up, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Nope. <laughs> he just and then he walks away doing the ten sign. Ten, 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 ten. <laughs> but we had some really good showings in uh, the Royal Rumble altogether. bunch of uh, bunch of cool things happened. bunch. Of Brock got out. fucking jobbed out by Goldberg again. Brock got jobbed out in fucking four minutes thirty seconds. He lasted four <laughs> minutes and thirty seconds. It's fucking Brock Lesnar too, and he got jobbed out immediately. Yeah. So it's like somebody said it, and I think it's true, because Goldberg actually got a uh, Goldberg actually got kicked, got thrown out of the ring by by Hunter, Taker. Yeah, by Taker. So it's like a triangle where Brock can beat Taker, Taker can beat Goldberg, and Goldberg can beat Brock. Yeah. Which so does that mean it's like intelligence, strength, and uh, trickiness? It's, bas it's the Triforce, basically. Uh, Undertaker is the Triforce of, uh... Wisdom. Well, I can't say that anymore. I was, I was gonna say, like, he has the, the fucking Triforce of WrestleMania. But... <laughs> the Triforce of WrestleMania? What he actually has is, like, the Triforce as kayfabe, because, you know... The Undertaker's character, he like he never ever breaks character because they're like, oh, you're the one wrestler who can never break character, whether you're in the ring or out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but yeah, it was it was a great rumble. I mean, you got to see all these people. You got to see Bray Wyatt, who's legitimately one of my favorite wrestlers in the world right now, do some cool stuff. And he was joined by Randy Orton, who I think their team up together is pretty good. You got to see Luke. Is Martin. Randy in, like an honorary member of the Wyatt family now? No, he's 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 officially a me- he's like officially a, a member of the Wyatt family. But the problem is that. He doesn't have a beard. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was all good. Everything was great. I thought, man, we're coming down to 29. People were posting on Twitter, who's it going to be? P- there were people going around, oh, it's going to be Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe just showed up at, at the NXT uh, takeover event. The night before. The night before, and he was being shown. Everybody's like, oh, it's going to be Joe. Oh, it's definitely going to be Joe. And then some people were like, oh, no. If Finn's finally cleared for clear it for in-ring work again he's gonna get he's gonna come back and win the fucking universal title then there were some people who were fucking saying oh it's kurt angle because he's being inducted inducted into the hall of fame this year and no and then some people were like it could be fucking anybody and then danny 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 it was a samoan it was a samoan named joe <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, what were they thinking? For people who don't know, it was the Samoan name. I'm sorry if I get his name wrong, but I don't care at this point. Joe Analawahi, uh, who, or in other words, Roman Reigns. Why did, people, why did, why did they think that... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they, they think that people like Roman Reigns, they just are forcing him down their throats because, you know, I don't know, they like (laughs) aggravating their audience, I guess. It was, I don't know what, oh God. The point, at least this is what I heard, they said, oh, well, they sent out Roman because they needed to set up a feud with The Undertaker where he's going to go over Undertaker at, fucking Wrestlemania which has gone over so well in the past when The Undertaker's fucking been defeated at Wrestlemania. Remember the last time that happened and everybody was just fucking happy? Remember the last time that fucking happened? It, it took them si- like six months to get over it and they're like, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh. <laughs> but when it first happened, they were like, whoa, 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 you broke the streak! <laughs> and, the, and the problem was, it was the streak broken by a part-timer. Admittedly, The Undertaker's the most part-timer of part-timers, but, everybody, but it's the fucking Undertaker. We all... We all just get fucking... Everybody completely marks out when The Undertaker shows up and the forgets that he's a, a fucking... full-time part-timer. Yeah, but everyone if marks makes out. Sense. Everyone marks out when they hear The Undertaker's music because he's a fucking 60-year-old grandpa who's fucking six foot... Who's almost fucking seven feet tall so he can barely walk anywhere anymore. But he fucking holds such a presence when he shows up. And now you're going to have him job out to Roman? Vince, what are you thinking? Oh, the biggest dick deflation of the fucking night. Randy ended up winning the Rumble, which was uh, predicted. You know, it was predicted a few weeks before the Rumble, but... I don't get why. I don't know how people just started predicting that. I think it was because Meltzer, uh, Dave Meltzer, actually said something like, as to, like, they're changing plans behind the scenes and it's going to be Randy who wins. Which is just dumb. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's not the dumbest thing I've heard. It's not. You remember thing. when they were, like, interviewing wrestlers and, like, who do you think is gonna be uh, in the Rumble? Or, like, uh, what's his name? Seth Rollins, actually. He said that he thinks that Kenny Omega would be there. He, like, he name-dropped him. And then they, re- they took that video down and they re-uploaded it and they cut that out. <laughs> which was crazy. Because they don't want to get, they don't want to get people's fucking excitement too much. If fucking, the, if the fucking rumble was booked the way I would have wanted it, fucking the last four entries would have been fucking Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, and Kenny Omega. That would have been. But crazy. then, but then that would have been too good. And you know, WWE doesn't ever want to do anything that makes you happy. You know what else doesn't want to do anything that'll make you happy? Oh. Microsoft. Oh. Except, Microsoft. you know, 
on the rare occasions they do, it's like a fucking monkey spa, you know. They're saying that Phantom Dust is still happening, apparently. Well, yeah, like I've been saying before in previous podcasts, it was never officially canceled. I mean, sure, <laughs> production of it ceased, you know. I mean, development of it, you know, <laughs> stopped because the studio was fucking dismantled. But, I mean, they still have the the IP. It, it, it didn't get, uh, uh, what is that, scale-bounded. It didn't get scale-bounded. <laughs> it didn't get scale-bounded. <laughs> That's the new term. Yeah. Oh, God, it... You know what? That is the new term, because you know, fucking four years of development, like two million or millions of dollars, not just two, and then you just fucking cancel it. Jeez. But wouldn't that be wouldn't that be Inafunaid, since he spent fucking three mil three point eight million dollars on two different projects, and one got canceled, and the other just was trash. But let's not get into shit talking in a fune. We could do that all day. And once uh, Hawk Kaiser, the final brave, gets back from his uh, journey into the woods where he plans to defeat the evil bear Akuma, uh, he'll probably return with his hatred of in a fune. That's a little but bit for... too real, yo. <laughs> you know, but... like, well, don't, don't spoil what he's actually doing. But... <laughs> so. <clears throat> They're saying that the Phantom Dust, I guess it's the, I'm not even sure if it's the sequel or the reboot or the fucking port or the upscale or whatever it would be, should ship before E3. That's crazy. I mean, I think that's actually pro- like, they should wait until after E3, right? Or during E3, because then they can just have a big fucking fuck you trailer. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just me being crazy. <laughs> well,. You know, it's you know what else is crazy about fucking Microsoft at this point is that Phil Spencer is getting weird with his fucking tweets. Yeah. He actually released a tweet the other day, and like almost verbatim, he said, "Don't go out and don't go out and pre-order the Scorpio." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait some, until we actually announce. Somebody games. asked, "Is like, wow, uh, I can't wait to pre-order the Scorpio," and he's, he's like, "What? Don't do it. Don't pre-order until you see games that you want." And this is, like, fucking crazy. I think he's gone crazy from being in last place for too long. I think... I actually think that's kind of admirable in a way, though. Because, I mean, you, it's like... He, he's saying something that's very, that's really fucking obvious. And <clears throat> this is clearly a thing where it's like, oh, I have confidence that once you see these games, you're all gonna shit your fucking pants. But it's like... he's He's saying, don't pre-ordered the fucking console. Well, the thing is, Phil At Spencer, least he's been, he's sort of been like this since the generation <laughs> started. I mean, uh, I don't know if you recall, uh, again, uh, Hawk Heiser was here. He would, he would be able to speak more on him, but there was like these crazy Xbox fanboys who were like, shit-talking uh, Phil, or on, he's shit-talking Phil Spencer on Twitter, because he's not like a fucking he, he's not a fan of the, the console wars and yeah. he's yeah, always that, been like that he seems like I don't I don't know he seems like a genuinely good guy it's just he's unfortunately saddled with Microsoft's weird decisions mm. like he no I'm serious I think he sound he sounds like a genuinely good guy it's just he's fucking sheltered with Microsoft's odd decisions. Uh, about as good of... as you could be in that position, you know. Yeah, you know what else is an odd decision? Fucking... The fucking... Oh, God, I still don't fucking know what they're thinking. Fucking... The Switch's online... The Switch's online... What it, What is it called? Service Your subscription? fee? Subscription? I'm calling it a service fee, because that's basically what it is. Nah. The fucking Switch's online service fee is going to be thirty dollars a year or at least estimated at thirty dollars a year they said it's going to be two thousand twenty thousand to thirty thousand yen which roughly equates to twenty seven dollars was this like official confirmation somewhere is this just uh... no this this was officially confirmed it's going to be like twenty to thirty dollars a year which yeah that's cool that's that's actually not bad 
It's, it's cheaper than Xbox Live and uh, PlayStation. I forget was it Network. PlayStation Plus, oh, yeah. but I still don't. I still don't fucking like it. I don't like it. I know. I know it's. Nit- I know some people are gonna say, "Oh, it's nitpicking. You should have no problem." But no. You want to know one of the advantages to owning a fucking console? The fact that you didn't have to. Pe- you didn't have to fucking worry about setting up a billion things just to play online. It- like last generation, if I wanted to fucking play online. I wanted to play online with fucking my friends in, like, I don't know, Blazeble or something. Pop in the game, if I had fucking set up my PSN and go. There we go. Plain and simple. Right there. Bam. Fucking now I have to fucking set up my fucking... I'm gonna have to fucking set up my Switch, fucking connect to the fucking internet, make sure that I paid my service fee, uh, fucking sync my console, fucking install all the games, fucking go to the fucking... It's so fucking stupid. And, and that's the Why are there thing. all these? Like, if you have more than one console, it's just gonna. That's that's why it's like such a bummer. It's like, if you have a PS4 and you and or you have an Xbox One and you get a Switch, you're paying for different fucking online services. Which roughly, uh, I believe that fucking Xbox Xbox I believe has the biggest has the highest charging one, which is like, what seventy dollars a year. I, yeah, like 70 bucks a year. Then PlayStation's probably like right behind, I believe, with like $54 a year. So it's like all together you're paying well over $100 to just fucking to just play just... online, which is complete and total bullshit. I don't know how they got away with that. I don't know they... how <laughs> Xbox got away with that. It's because Microsoft, look, this is how I see it. The reason they got away with it was because when people were buying the Microsoft consoles, it was back before internet was really a readily accessible thing. So they were like, hey, you want good service? Pay for it. And they were like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So people started getting into Xbox Gold. I think that was what it was at the time. And then PlayStation with Sony, they were like, oh, we want to uh, slice that pie too. And then Nintendo was like, huh, how can we scam our fans even more? And then they were like, hey, Microsoft, that's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't that, if it wasn't for that, you know, maybe people would notice that their charging stations are like fucking, they're charging $60 for what basically equates to a fucking a power source and an HDMI port. But <laughs> that's just, another can of worms. I'm just absolutely appalled at the fucking cons- at what console games are turning into and people said oh console games are just going to become PCs after a while and it's starting to look like they fucking well, are well yeah that's <laughs> that was like the one prediction that was like super on the money and no it, I... it's not actually that it's that PCs are becoming more console like because it's, it's easier and easier to just go out and buy a, a gaming PC and it just works out the box which is fucking crazy I remember back in the day where you had to fucking rejigger the fucking, uh, you, you had to rejigger every single setting and then make sure that you had the right video card and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But that was always a pain in the ass. But then again, that's why I wasn't a PC gamer, but apparently yeah. now I'm basically becoming one with fucking, like, if now you Now they're look, just fucking fusing the other. Yeah, but the problem is, the main problem is, now I'm going to have to have another fucking god i've got too many consoles sitting on my fucking shelf here i've got my wii u i've got my ps2 i've got my ps3 i've got my ps4 and then yeah. i've got like four i've got one two three four separate hard drives sitting here then i've got my laptop sitting on top of that and it's like shit oh you know what though you could always use a switch as a portable or maybe not because uh <laughs> the transition uh the Nintendo's president was recently talking about how he had no plans to kill the 3DS, and in fact, he was looking forward to a 3DS successor, actually considering the possibility of a 3DS successor, which, in my opinion, <laughs> would just totally kill the viability of using the Switch as a portable, as like a hybrid portable system, you know? Well, it all depends on how far... It all depends on how far the ne- the next questionable 
uh, handheld goes. If it fucking, like, say, if it's anywhere around the Switch's power, then oh, it fucking kills it easily because yeah. the 3DS, the DS is the most popular handheld in, in, I think, the most popular handheld in history, right? So when they upgraded to the 3DS, it was just a stronger DS and you could still play all your DS games and play 3DS games. So it was like, there was, it was the best. And if they get something that's around as strong as the Switch, especially when it comes to the Japanese, the Japanese will eat that shit up because they love, love yeah. the DS. It just it's, it seems counterintuitive, you know. You just got a new system that's coming out this year, but then you're like, Are, how old is the 3DS? The 3DS came out in like 2012 or 2011, right? Or maybe even earlier than that. I think the I think the 3DS is actually like very old. Yeah, no, the 3DS like is that. extremely old. Like it should be on its death throes right now. But you're saying that you have no plans of like uh, ending it, and that also implies that they have like no plans of consolidating their mobile gaming and their uh, not mobile gaming, their portable gaming and their home console gaming because. They're, they are working on their mobile market on their phones. Like, Switch came out, uh, not Switch, Super Mario Run came out, and Fire Emblem Heroes just came out. Uh, apparently and, it's six years old. And that's crazy for a, for a handheld. Uh, but Fire Emblem Heroes just came out, and from what some of my friends have been saying, it's actually okay for mobage so yeah I, I played it it's actually like and that and it you remember what i said a while ago anybody who can remember what i said uh it's it's exactly what it should be because fucking fire emblem and pokemon are very simple games that can actually work on phones it's exactly what it should be mm. but you know you want to know this is this is what i would personally want I would want them to stick with the 3DS, fucking run that shit into the dirt. Actually run that shit into the fucking dirt. Yeah. And then and then when it gets to the point where it can't you can't fucking squeeze any more blood from that stone, just fucking let it die and then put the rest of the and then put the rest of your effort into the switch. Exactly. Exactly. And then like if you, you can still have your, your mobile game you can still have your Pokemon Go's, your Fire Emblem Heroes and your Super Mario runs on the phones and that way you can just get revenue off of that because you know people buy those in space and you can have more first party and second party Nintendo games coming out on the Switch because the biggest fear that I think anybody will have when they get the Switch is that it will have like fucking months and months of no games like the Wii U had and the, uh, even the Wii had. Yeah, that's the big. That's obviously the biggest fear. The biggest fear is uh, it, for any console, for any game, is uh, droughts for people who really like the uh, who really like the console. And I had, I actually had like a bunch of good games for the Switch for the uh, Wii U. I was about to say for the Switch, but <clears throat> the reason that I had all the good games and didn't mind was probably because I don't play games as much as I used to. Like, I don't... I don't get, like... I don't sit down and play, like, through an entire game like I used to. Like, I've only beaten Xenoblade Chronicles X, like, two or three... How many times now? Three times. And it's like... Like, you can ask, you can ask Felix how many times I beat the original Xenoblade back when I didn't have anything you Shouldn't to do. even mention it, because he's gonna fucking go back and play it. <laughs> No, oh shit, I forgot I need to go play Last Story. <laughs> God. Anyway, but yeah, I, I I can't, I'm just gonna keep waiting on it. It sounds like the say according to what I hear, the uh, pre-orders for the Switch are sounding good and more people keep day by day saying, hey, we wanna, we wanna look into making a game on the Switch. Oh, and, and there's gonna be a, a Super Bowl commercial, which I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm Even sad, though I've I'm already sad. seen it. I'm sad that that Super Bowl commercial isn't the fucking German one where the guy's playing the Switch on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what else is in the toilet? Super Street, Fight, Super Street Fighter or Street Fighter 5, whatever. Oh, don't leak the prototype. <laughs> you 
just Ono from Japan is like, oh, don't tell them about Super Street Fighter V. But yeah, Street Fighter V sales, they didn't sell as much as they predicted. And that's a, a bit of an understatement. Then again, Capcom has been known to put fucking crazy fucking prediction numbers on their sales. Uh, report just came in. Yeah, yeah, definitely Square Enix. Report just came in that Street Fighter V finally surpassed 1.5 million uh, copies sold uh, after just about a year. And their original prediction was that it was going to sell 2 million copies by the end of 2016. Which is, oof. They're at 75% of their prediction. To be honest, though, like 1.5 million isn't even that bad, especially for a game that had a terrible launch. Oh, definitely. Because, like, you can ask and you can ask anybody who isn't a Street Fighter drone, who, like, that game when it launched, launched fucking it. It came out of the gate like falling all over itself. But you know what? That's uh, uh, that launch is uh, actually why it didn't perform as well. Uh, I actually looked at the analytics. Most of the sales were in uh, March. When did when did the game come out? They were in that time period when the game first came out, and then after that, it took them six months to sell a uh, hundred thousand more. Which is why it's like, oh, it's selling it's selling good now, and admittedly, it should be because I don't I don't like dislikes fucking Street Fighter V, but you can actually go and look at its fucking original, like, when it was originally released, it was fucking trashed by fucking reviewers. Like, the fucking game on release got, like, a fucking 7 point, a 7 by GameStop. By GameStop! And a fucking 6 on Steam, which essentially means, like, the fucking drone, even the drones were like, yeah. ooh, this is bad. I don't like this. Because, you know, apparently, like, features... I think it's features that people take for granted in other fighting games, but you know, you definitely notice when it, they're lacking, like, arcade mode. Like, people really take offense to not having an arcade mode, and there wasn't a proper story. Uh, what else? Uh, there weren't, like... Uh, the second player couldn't fucking restart the game. If you're playing locally, <laughs> you have to fucking put your wow. thumbs up to the first player. Like, <laughs> go back to the character select screen. It was it was wow. dumb. <laughs> and this is all because this is all because they rushed it out. We mentioned this. Yeah, we mentioned this last uh, last week. I think it was that they just tried to get it out for Evo so bad because they needed those fucking uh, advert those easy ad those e easy advertisements. Uh, it was their biggest mistake, like. <laughs> which it se which I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that Harada learned from that, because he essentially said, yeah, we don't want to fuck up like them, with his fucking uh, statements from last week, I think it was, on, on hoping not to release a bare-bones version of Tekken 7. I mean, <laughs> Tekken 7's been in the lab for two years, <laughs> <laughs> If it fucking if that shit came out bare bones, Harada, you're in the fucking garbage bin, dude. Like, holy shit, that game was fucking held up for a long ass time. But eh, at least maybe you know, at least Tekken Seven will have characters, right? <laughs> you got Street Fighter Five on release. You got like nine characters. No, hold on. Who are who the original? Uh, Geef, uh, Dalsum, Ryuken, Chun Li. Chun uh, uh, Dawson wasn't a part of the original group. Was yeah, he? he was. He was. Uh, Laura. Uh, psh, 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 psh. What's that nigga's name? Uh, Rashid. Oh Fang, yeah, Rashid. Uh, Bison. Fang. I think you get like fifteen characters. No, no, wasn't wasn't Bison not released on fucking? Wasn't he not out on release? No, he was. Uh, it was just the uh, Balrog wasn't. So you got like fifteen characters, right? And that's like a massive downgrade because Ultra had like 45, so... <laughs> you got those, and then you got six more characters from the DLC, but the DLC kept getting delayed, right? So you got like a, a, a rate of one character every two months. 
and then it was and then whenever they released a new character the character came with a huge amount of glitches <laughs> like with fucking with fucking the most questionable glitch i've ever seen ever with fucking uh who was it? alex if he did certain moves it would roll back the game <laughs> it would roll back the game to an older version that's crazy like he learned like he fucking got a final flash version of the, <laughs> the knife from relento and cross testing <laughs> somehow got the ability to roll back to an older version how does that happen like wouldn't that roll him back to a state in which he didn't exist <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but let's also let's talk about uh, something else that's fucking. <coughs> Sorry, my. <coughs> oh, oh no, the disease. What's happening? <laughs> but uh, let's talk about this Deus Ex taking a break for the Marvel projects. So I'm not a big fan of Deus Ex, but from what I hear, Deus Ex may be taking a break for uh, this upcoming Marvel Avengers project for anybody who can't see me, and I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm making air quotes. Uh, uh, Apparently, Deus Ex is going to take a break while the studio that worked on uh, the Deus Ex games (coughs) works on this upcoming Marvel game. And I think that people are kind of happy about that. You know because... what? I'm I'm happy about that. I liked Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution, but up until like last month, <laughs> I, I didn't even realize that Mankind Divided came out. <laughs> wow, really? It's crazy. Yeah, because like they just dropped that game and like there was like no fanfare for it. I, like I know people bought it, but... <sighs> Ever well, since that fucking I... pre-order debacle, you know, there was just fucking... Oh, yeah, you mean uh, you mean augment your pre-order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking, what were they? Oh, God. They were smoking. But, but people say that, that that game had a lot of problems, and people who were big fans of Deus Ex felt really betrayed yeah. with that Apparently game. Apparently, it's half they a said fucking game. Five. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a typical Square Enix launch past... 2009 where it's like the game comes out and everybody's just like oh well where's the rest of the game oh you can you can buy the the ending for dlc or some shit like that yeah yeah but uh apparently they're gonna take a break for this marvel property and it seems like marvel's kicking it in the fucking overdrive lately there's that and then there's two other marvel tv shows that are coming out Oh, are you mentioning uh, Cloak and Dagger? Uh, Cloak and Dagger and The Runaways. Everybody's so, favorite C-list, no, like D-list Marvel heroes? Nigga. My, nah, nigga, you mean fucking J-list. <laughs> fucking Marvel Cloak and Dagger are two characters who have shown up on multiple occasions, but every time they do there's like half of the people who are watching whatever show or reading whatever comic and they just go oh no, like no i swear they showed up in one of those spider-man cartoons and they're just like yeah it's cloak and day like uh, am i supposed to know who these are <laughs> like exactly. i like it, it's got to the point where i can recognize their powers like uh, i believe one has like uh teleports through shadows uh yeah, that's uh, well, obviously. <laughs> so I recognize their powers, but then you're like, all right, <laughs> name one cloak and dagger storyline. I'm like, nah, bruh. <laughs> I actually, I actually read one cloak and dagger comic because they had like a single comic that they were in that was all about them, and it was it was the most anticlimactic fucking thing I've ever read. It was one chapter, and it went nowhere, and then they switched. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's so... It seems like they're kind of delegated to being, like, cameos and other more popular hero stories, but the, they're getting their own show, which, you know, maybe they'll be able to reinvent, reinvent them to a, a wider audience, <laughs> like they did with well, Jessica Jones. Th- we're gonna, well, we're going to end up having this discussion probably during this, but I'll tell you exactly why they're posting, why they're doing this, and you and I will, like I said, we'll probably have this discussion. <clears throat> the reason they're doing this is because Cloak and Dagger in uh, in some of the comic iterations are actually a couple. Yeah, that makes sense. 
So it's going to be a white girl with a black boyfriend. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and I think the main character's name is, no joke, I think Cloak's name is actually Tyrone. <laughs> I'm dead serious, and uh, the girl, I definitely remember Dagger's name. Her name is uh, Tandy. Tandy? 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 Tandy. Tandy. <laughs> T-A-N-D-Y. <clears throat> but yeah, they cast, they cast the, uh, they cast the two people for it. And one of them is like some girl from fucking Disney. Yeah. And the other is like some kid with some unpronounceable name. So, <clears throat> you know, whatever. Yeah. It, uh, I'm hoping it'll be good, because I, I I think that they can actually do something with Cloak and Dagger, and it's not like if they mess up, anybody's gonna be like, "How dare you, Marvel?" You <laughs> it's gonna no, it's gonna be people. one guy who's like that, but he's just like, eh. <laughs> I could send an angry email, but <laughs> really, <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna be like, I could complain about this, but am I really gonna be that guy? Am I gonna be that one guy? Speaking of being that one guy, I want to talk about me being that one guy who's excited for the upcoming Runaways TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know I'm 100% that one guy, but uh, Runaways was a comic that I was really into a couple of years ago, and uh, it's also another one where it has an extremely diverse cast. Uh, like, wait. the entire cast is a bunch of... Who is the most iconic character from the Runaways? The most iconic character from the Runaways is actually Nico Minoru. Yeah, never heard of her. So, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but she's a. <clears throat> uh, the characters are. If I'm, you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm probably gonna get a lot of names wrong because I read this years ago. Uh, Alex Wilder, Nico Minoru, uh, Gertrude. I can't remember her last name. Chase can't remember his last name. Uh, Molly Hernandez and oh God, there's, there's one other person oh uh, Carolina so they're all like I said it's a huge diverse cast the main character Alex is a black kid super, is supposed to be like a nerdy black kid when he first shows up in the comic he's fucking playing an MMO, some shitty Avengers MMO and fucking role playing super hard trying to be fucking Captain America in the fucking game. Uh, Nico is your standard, well, your standard Japanese American girl with the fucking purple streak in her hair. Oh, damn Because it. that's the one, that's the one, that, apparently that's the one Asian girl stereotype that everybody seems yeah, to think exists. Apparently. Where it's just like a one, like an Asian girl with a fucking purple strip, strip in their hair. I don't know why that's a thing. Yeah. Why did that become a thing? I guess because showing uh, them with yellow skin became offensive. <laughs> <laughs> then there's uh, Gertrude, who is... Gertrude is the SJW character. She is a chunk... She is a chunky, know-it-all, talk, big-talking, fucking easy, fucking shitty attitude little fat girl who... I, I can't explain any more than that without giving away like what she's go what's going to end up happening. Uh, <clears throat> there's Chase, who is just straight up a dude bro. That's his entire character is that he's a dude bro. Carolina, who is like the super pretty, uh, super popular blonde white girl who everybody loves and is so effervescent and whatever else. And then there's Molly, who's probably the coolest character, who's actually just some shitty kid who ends up uh, being pro who ended up being one of the most popular characters, but they ended up stopped using because Marvel doesn't know how to remember that they have characters. So is Runaways like an Earth Six One Six mainline Marvel continuity uh, story, or is it like a fucking one-off? No, no, it's actually a uh, six one six, and the all the runaway characters actually reappear multiple times throughout six one six. The latest appearance of a character from one Runaways, unfortunately, was Nico because she's the de facto main character of Runaways, and she appeared in uh, A Force. You you remember that comic A Force? <coughs> Which was actually pretty good for the first few chapters until they gave She Hulk pants. Mm. That sounds awful. They gave, 
they randomly just gave She-Hulk pants, and it was the most distracting thing ever. Because apparently, uh, you know, a leotard. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to get into it. Uh... <laughs> No, 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 look, we like, can get into it, because it's I don't like, know why, it was, it, but... it was absolutely, it's absolutely the, I feel it's just dumb, because it's fucking, it's, okay, it's fucking She-Hulk, she's a giant green fucking muscle lady, and she wears a leotard, and she's wearing a leotard for the last, what, Ten years of, cir- of fucking and wearing circulation. wearing the leotard makes sense because you know it's something she can have on underneath her lawyer clothes and just switch to. But... Exactly, and she and the thing what made even more sense was because she would wear it because it's like she walks around as uh, She Hulk most of the yeah. time anyway. Because unlike uh, Bruce Banner, who can't control his fucking Hulk powers, she has full control of her Hulk powers and is actually really calm and really intelligent and just decides, oh, I'm going to wear this underneath my lawyer clothes when I need to, just rip off the lawyer clothes and there I go. But no, she had to wear pants all of a sudden. Which, like, isn't that inconvenient? Like, she went to, like, switch into the pants. <laughs> Dumb. <clears throat> uh, well, then again, she probably doesn't wear a fucking lawyer skirt anymore either yeah, because well, of her skirt. But, yeah, uh, Marvel is pushing forward with I, I have so many I love I love Marvel's characters so much there are so many cool characters I actually like a lot of the things that they've done and I really really like uh, three of the new characters that they brought on for this whole uh, new age Marvel thing I know a lot of people don't especially that one idiot from that one video who ah fucking DC is in, making way more money than Marvel <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad Fuck we are not gonna name that person. <laughs> I'm not naming. I'm not naming that guy because I don't fucking. I I fucking completely erased his name from my mind. Fucking idiot. But I actually like. Uh, I like a lot of the stuff they have. Like if they were to just, if they were to just push the three characters that they have for this new age, the fucking. Miles, uh, Kamala Khan, and the new Nova. If they were to push those three, it would be real. It's really obvious that people have already taken yeah. to those three. People really like them. Why not stick with only them? You can make an Avengers team with those three as the leaders and have them pick up other new kid Avengers and fucking do things. But no, they had they picked up they picked up three of the weirdest choices. They picked up Amadeus Cho, who I already did like anyway, but he's the new Hulk. Uh, they picked up Vix, and uh, I said her name is Vix, uh, Vision's daughter, who he made, yeah. which is dumb. And they picked up Kid Cyclops, who I'm not even going to explain what's wrong with that. If you don't know by now, then it's your own fault. Uh, I, I know that you, of everybody, Felix, have probably the biggest thing to talk about on that. <coughs> Because I know you don't read the Marvel comics, but you're in most of like the comic book threads. You see all the nonsense. Yeah, that well, happens. I, I try to stay updated on the latest. You know, I don't, I don't want to call them controversies because let's face it, every single character change you do in anything is going to be a controversy one way or another. Unless you know, it's very rare that you do something that's just like universally labeled as a positive. Even even Miles Morales, well, when he first came out, people were like, Why did you have to kill Ultimate Peter? <sighs> well, probably the only one that I see that nobody really complains about anymore. They complained about it for... Here's the, here's the dumbest one, too. It was... They complained about it for like a month, then everybody was like, Eh, never mind, this kind of makes sense. Was uh, X-23 becoming the new Wolverine? And then... It was the dumbest... It was like shooting at the air with Marvel because it was at the time where Marvel was blowing back against the internet. There was a fucking joke in, like, the third issue of the new Wolverine run where she was like, oh, well, I'm the girl Wolverine. I'm pretty it, I'm pretty sure somebody will complain about that online. And it was like, who are you talking about? Everybody's okay with this. Yeah. Like, everybody I talked to was like, yeah, that makes sense. Because, because it made actually... sense. Yes, yeah, it was actually be... built up. It wasn't just, like, out of nowhere. Exactly. It was built up over, what, like, 
15 years? <laughs> yes. And everybody was like, oh, she's the new Wolverine. Okay. After 15 years, she gets what she was supposed to be. This is fine. We accept this. This is fine. Or you do like fucking Kamala Khan, and you just have a character who appears who's so, who everybody likes so much, who's written so well, that everybody's like, oh, you know, this is cool. Yo, yo, you, you know what? That's rare, too. The Kamala thing... I was expecting blowback from that, and there never was any. Probably because, you know, the original Miss Marvel still exists. They didn't, like, kill her off or anything. Yeah, but it was it's still the fact that Ma- that uh, Kamala was written into the role so well that it made sense. It's not like fucking... Who, who, who can I say is the one that... The dumbest one, and I'm going to always complain about him, is fucking Cho. Yeah. Amadeus Cho is the dumbest one. Why is he a Hulk? Why is it's, he it the work. Hulk now? And why is he like, oh, I'm so much smarter than Bruce Banner, and I can fucking control myself while I'm Hulk Dalek? Like, so gay. <laughs> it's so it's, lame. It's so dumb. But we can complain about this all day. But I want to talk about the biggest news because we're on, we're we're running short on time. But I want to complain about the absolute biggest news of the week. So. <clears throat> Anybody who knows GameStop, anybody who goes to GameStop Fucking has heard of GameStop. <laughs> Everybody always says that GameStop is the worst company in like the worst game the worst video game selling company in the world or whatever, but no, they're actually proving to be terrible. So, for anybody who doesn't know, <clears throat> the circle of life is uh, some kind of weird practice that GameStop started doing. So say, uh, say Felix were to walk into a GameStop, and he was balling. He was like, I got $1,000. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to drop $1,000 in this GameStop and come out. Now, say he were to spend $1,000 on brand new stuff, only brand new stuff, and he were to walk out. That GameStop would be in trouble because at least 30% of that needs to be used. Yeah. They have this thing called the circle of life. The way it works, if a GameStop employees were to say sell their uh, sell their merchandise and it was all new, because of the way the new purchases work, a large portion of that goes to publishers and whatever else, publishers and distributors. But if they were to sell used things, like any used title, GameStop gets 100% of that profit. Yeah. So they need they need you to sell they need people who work at GameStop to sell used products and because of that they have started I guess like grading people on this the big problem is the fact that this is such a malicious cycle that if you actually don't sell the uh, correct amount at GameStop then you will end up getting like shit canned or fucking just end up lo- your GameStop could get shut down if you don't sell enough used games to the point where it's so scary for people who work at GameStop that they've actually started to lie <laughs> and say that they don't have new games and stuff and trick people into fucking just selling old ones and re-upping people's fucking uh, power-up rewards membership without the people knowing. Yeah. And, you it, know, a couple, like, a couple of years ago, it was the pre-order thing, like, you, they had a mandate like on how, how many pre-orders that each employee like if you were working the cash register you had to have a certain amount of uh, pre-orders sold or they just take you <laughs> off the cash register and they put you on inventory or some shit and now now they're like oh why are we doing this why are we trying to show pre oh, well the reason why they were doing that is because they get a, a whole bunch of fucking chunk of profit from you know, pre-order bonuses and shit. But now with the used thing, like, with the used game practices they're doing now, I think that is actually, like, more malicious and more harmful to the game industry than even, like, piracy. Uh, I don't know. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on this, 100% on this, because, like, yeah, sure, all right, you pirate a game. It, it, a game is being pirated. Yeah, the developer gets no money from that whatever but if a game's being sold by GameStop used for like fucking 
and they get all the money. They're making money off of that, using the developers' games and stuff. They're ripping off the consumer. They're ripping off the developers, and there's there's no positives to that whatsoever. Only for GameStop. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's just it's it's fucking it's sickening, and it's sickening because they're keeping. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> they're keeping GameStop employees essentially hostage fucking putting a gun to their head say you better tell them that this fucking used copy of Mario Super Strikers is out instead of giving them fucking Assassin's Creed Unity 3 dub edition but I don't I don't even know like there have been instances where I've seen in GameStop the new version of a game will cost like I don't know 29.99 and then the used copy will cost like 59.99 and I'm not even joking and it's like, why would you, why would I ever, this doesn't, And there's what? also a reason why they have, like, that trade-in, trade-in deals, so like, oh, you trade in these certain games, uh, then, well, uh, you can get this game, or they'll give you bonus credit, or bonus whatever, what, I don't know what they're calling, like, like, bonus credit towards the purchase of a new game, like, yeah, okay, so you take five copies of my games that came out last month, right, those games that are still flying off the shelves, uh, so you can sell the used copies, like, the new copy is, like, $60, and then GameStop sells it used for, like, fucking 54 and you're like, wow, what a deal, <laughs> but really, it's just giving them all the money. It's absolute nonsense. And GameStop's always been bad. GameStop's always been bad with this, but I feel GameStop is somewhat of a necessary evil. And it, and here's why. It's not. No, no, I'm serious. I think you want to know why I think it is? Why? It's a necessary evil because if GameStop isn't around, who are you going to go to for used games that you can just drive down the street and pick up? Uh, you know what? I... I... I, I I hear you on that point, but I counter with uh, GameFly and like fucking Amazon, where you can just get the game. Like, sure, you you'll have to wait like two days, three days, but you'll get the games for cheaper, and there's still like a, pro a percentage of that is still going to the publisher, right? No, no, I know that. I know that it's definitely true that you can get them on. Uh, you can get a, you can get whatever game you can get any game on fucking. Amazon, and they have a fucking way bigger library, obviously, because it's people selling the games. So if I want to get fucking Xenosaga Episode 2, which I got off of Amazon, I can actually get it there. Because I ran around to a bunch of GameStops trying to find that shit and couldn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, this was like back a couple of years ago, which, of course, if I did it now, I wouldn't find it at all. But I went around to a bunch of GameStops and didn't find it. But I found it on Amazon. But my point... I, f I feel I feel GameStop is a necessary evil, and I feel that the nece the necessity of evil is. Damn it! I had a quote, but I fucking forgot. You know what could just fucking kill GameStop is like the actual <laughs> the game companies. Like if they just fucking put out, you know, their old games. Like they put out the PS2 games more frequently uh, for digital purchase or. Like, they make the HD remakes, and they put them out on discount prices. Like, that would that would just fucking kill Because people on the game store are like, yeah, I want to get all these used games. I want to get these PS2 games that I never played, and they're probably like five bucks. Whatever. No, they're not. They're like, they're still like ten dollars in game stuff. But, you know, that's the point. Like, But I think that's about it. Because we're almost, we're almost hitting that hour mark, you know? Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's all. I I feel I feel so bad. If if Hawk Kaiser the Brave hadn't already skinned that bear and is currently parading <laughs> it around in the fucking town, screaming from the highest uh, peak in his screaming from the highest peak in his town that he is the king of the king of the woods or whatever. Well, you know, for, uh, we have uh, like a selective audience that gets this far to the videos. Well, uh, most of them. I can talk shit about them now because they're not going to come this far. A lot of them just, they get to like, wow. <laughs> they get to like 15 minutes and that's where the retention rate stops. But for, for those of you who actually made it this far, you know, that's, that's the reason why we keep making them. Like, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I actually enjoy, I enjoy doing this, and I actually, when I do have people sit down and listen to this, and people give me feedback on it, I really, I really like yeah, it. I good. always like hearing. I really like hearing what people have to say, and I like, uh, I like any type of feedback, even if it's negative. Which half the time it is negative. It's usually uh, it's definitely oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Especially, uh, I hope to bring uh, more content for the channel soon. But uh, until next week, uh, see you guys later. Yeah, take care of people. Oh, and since Hawkeyes are the final Braves, fuck off. Fuck off.